We are, they say, deeply committed to ensuring that English football is truly reflective of our modern and diverse society. This is fundamental to our core beliefs and we are focused on delivering diverse and meaningful change in football. They go on to say, we strongly reject any suggestion that the published data is either vague or misleading. Whilst we're making positive and tangible progress through our evidence-led approach, we also recognise that more can be done by everyone in the game and that substantive change will take time. We will continue, they say, to work with our stakeholders in English football to develop and grow in this critical area. The FA said that last year too. Um, the game says it consistently every year. Meanwhile, the black players are struggling to get a role even when they're qualified. So I think we need to really deal with the facts. And, the, and what the FA is saying, look, I'm not saying they're not well-intentioned. They are. But if you haven't got the skills and you haven't got the capability or you're not digging deep enough on the data, sometimes the best form of leadership is just to say that. And what we're saying to the game is, work with us. We are now crunching the data. We never did it before. You're not funding us to do it. We're doing it off our own backs with the best experts in the world, not just in the UK, in the world. And now what we want to do with the FA and the Premier League and the clubs is just have a meaningful discussion so that we can get to real action and real change. We love this game, Vicky. We love this game like everyone who's watching me on this channel. We love it. We love the way that Sky reports on this game. But what you can't see what is what goes on in those corridors, in what goes on in those royal boxes and various other places where we're not present, but manoeuvres are being had, networks are being built. And then when we apply for those jobs, even though we're qualified, we're being ushered out the door, being told we've done well, but ooh, we're just not quite good enough. Look. Meaningful change, meaningful partnership, meaningful conversations. Let's get on with it. Let's get it done so that this time next year, we're not faced with the same situation. The clip that you just seen was of a Sky Sports interview discussing the recent report that has come out that delves into the grim statistic that despite 43% of the Premier League and 34% of the English Football League who are black and playing, that only translates to 4.4% who then in turn become managers. Now, Clearly, that's a massive imbalance there in a grim statistic. And this isn't the first time that this issue has been talked about and then initiatives come in place to try and address it. There was the diversity code that was launched in 2020 to tackle inequality in the game. However, again, from the stats alone, it still looks like it hasn't, well, it hasn't made the impact in these areas that they wanted to. So the question is, and this is the title of the video, is do there need to be a Rooney rule put in place? Will that make the difference or the desired outcome that they want? Now, over in the US, the Rooney Rule was implemented way back when, but still, when it comes to the NFL, there's a, still a, a dearth of black head coaches. So even they still have issues, even though this Rooney Rule was put in place a long time ago. So will that be the be-all, end-all of you know this problem? Highly, li highly unlikely, but it could be a start. Because why the Rooney Rule would only stipulate you have to interview somebody who's an ethnic minority, it doesn't mean that they have to give them the role. It just means you have to interview at least one ethnic minority whenever there's a, you know, a role open or a vacancy opened up due to usually a firing. And that's one of the things I did find lacking in the interview. There wasn't really any suggestion of what the end game is, what the solution is. Is it a ten percent representation of football managers who are black? across the whole EFL? Is it proportional representation? I mean, the word meaningful, the phrase meaningful talk, it's all very vague. I don't know what that really meant, but of course we understood it's clearly, clearly not up to par with what's going on right now, which is only 4.4% of black, um, either former players or, you know, lesser players from the Premier League or the EFL turned into managers. And again, I've heard many former players, current players, bemoan the job opportunities that are afforded to them despite their attempts to get into management. I've heard players like Danny Rose saying, what's the point of even getting the coaching badges because he knows he's going to face brick walls instead of doors because that's just an unwritten rule that he's not going to get into management just because of the colour of his skin. Now, we have to be honest about the game of football. And this is where you just you can't be naive to the fact. And this is whether it's about being a player, a manager, director of football, whatever the position is, it doesn't matter. It's all about opinions Certain managers get for the luxury of being able to get fired, have another job, fired, have another job. And it's like their reputation is pretty much untarnished. Whereas others, they're fired once and that's their career at certain top flights done. They have to rebuild their reputation. 
elsewhere and it's a hard, hard road back. Why? Because it's all about perception. And this, I have to be fair, extends beyond race and even to nationality. I remember Sam Allardyce saying this, something to this effect, but very well. If his name was Sam Aladici, he would be seen in a better light and he would have got a top job by now, no problem, based on his record. And he's correct. For those who know, they really do know. There are so many good British white managers who don't even get a look in for some of these jobs or some of these better jobs. If they get fired, it's like they have to go to the ends of the earth to get another job to rebuild their so-called representation, uh, reputation. Sorry. Whereas a sexy farm manager, no, 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 they can fail, get another job, fail, and then they can get it right and then everything's fine. They can get a top job, no problem. Whereas a, a British manager, no, 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 they have to pretty much perfect out the gate. Otherwise, he's not just representing him at that point. It's, see, this is why we don't hire British managers. This is why we don't do this. Listen, this sport is an unfair sport. It's one of those industry sport where it's, it's unfair. Why? I don't make the rules, but it is what it is. So this game, a lot of time, is all about whether your face fits and in a lot of cases, whether your name fits. The appointments aren't always appointed on merit. They're based on opinions and a series of good networks. In the interview, he did mention it's about networks. If you have good networks, if you have good contacts, if you, you know, know the owners or the agents, sheer agents, it helps. It really does help, which definitely, definitely, I've got to be truthful, it will lead to discrimination on so many grounds. And because of that, it makes it more critical, which I, I, I hate this, but it's, it is the truth. That those who do break through, the rare ones that do, they kind of have to be successful. Otherwise, people privately and publicly will say, you know, this whole experiment didn't work. This is why we do this. This is why we don't do that. And they'll be reluctant to hire people of the same ilk again. So, and this is from my observation of life. I'm going to say this. Equality is not based on whether you succeed or not. It's based on how or when you fail. It's easy to champion and praise and big people up when they're doing well and everything's going right. Everyone loves the manager when everything goes right. What happens when things go wrong? And it will do, we're all human. Things go wrong. What's the treatment like then? That's my question. Is it fair? Is it not fair? Am I saying that they can't be criticised? No. Am I saying that what can't be fired if it's in the management or some sort of senior role or even a playing role? Am I saying they can't get dropped? No. But we all know the difference between fair treatment and unfair treatment. I can name a football off the top of my head, footballers off the top of my head who get unfair treatment as opposed to other players who do not more more than what they've been accused of doing and yet they get such different treatment. That's what I'm talking about. It's not about necessarily when you succeed but when you fail. What is a treatment like then? And that's the question. But all in all, the statistics are grim. There's been Co's initiative look to try and address it but it seems not to be working. So what is the solution? Is one of the issues that we don't have any ownership in the game? That's another big issue that's going on right now. Ownership has changed hands multiple times in the Premier League, especially, whereas in other leagues like Italian uh, League, the German League, even the Spanish League, a lot of them pretty much, they're owned by them. Their managers are all Italian, white Italian, white German, white Spanish. So they have a nice pathway in order to get into management, which protects them more than anything. I'm not saying there aren't foreigners in there. We know there are, but the ratio is a hell of a lot different than it is when it comes to the Premier League, and that might be a big problem at all. But I'm going to say this. If you think it's bad in the Premier League in England, I'm telling you, it's going to be a hell of a lot worse in the other leagues like Italy, Italy, Spain, and Germany. I'm telling you right now, just from what I've witnessed and what I've heard. So, yeah, grim reading, grim stats. But the question is, what's the solution? Let me know your thoughts on this. Until next time.